So I'm talking with Josh Lamore of Technicolor, and uh, we're talking about HDR and what Technicolor is doing in that space, which turns out to be a heck of a lot. Um, let's start uh, talking a little bit about content creation, since that's the beginning of the chain. Uh, Technicolor offers HDR grading services, you alluded to. Um, my question here is, how do you deal as, as a company that provides grading services with the fact that different displays now have different capabilities? It used to be in standard dynamic range, you know, you mastered or graded for 100 nits peak brightness and 709 color space, color gray, gamut, and that was all very well defined. Now you've got OLEDs that maybe reach 500 nits. You've got LCDs that maybe reach a, reach a thousand nits. You've got different color capabilities. One display might do 85% of the current color gamut that we use that we use in cinema called P3. Another might do 90 some percent. Some might even go beyond that. So how do you, as a color grading service provider, deal with the fact that now you've got different capabilities, not only in consumer displays, but in even in mastering displays. Right. Uh, absolutely a very pertinent question as we move into this new space. Um, so one of the things that's very important when you're mastering is to master to the highest quality possible. Uh, that being said, we still master for standard dynamic range because it's still the mass market solution. It's still the ability for uh, what everyone is going to see. So the colorist still wants to have full control over what that is. Um, so typically within a workflow, the mastering of the mastering process, we actually start with the cinema grade. We start with something that uh, is in a P3 space to the 48 nit screen for cinema. And from there, from that kind of first grade, we remove what's called an output referred lookup table. Uh, put on another one for the standard dynamic range Rec 709, and then grade for that, do what we call a trim pass for that. Uh, next, because we're now in this high dynamic range space, we would remove again the output referred lookup table for Rec 709, and we would move to an output referred lookup table for high dynamic range, uh, and then do a trim pass for that. So each of these are kind of a different trim pass. Uh, and then depending on if you're using uh, a proprietary technology, uh, trim pass, then that would be an additional one on top of that. And you can see how this can kind of start to escalate into multiple different versions. So our mm -hmm. goal here really is to, to define what, um, what your mastering specification is, uh, which we worked very heavily as one of the founding members of the UHD Alliance to define that for the industry, uh, together with the studios, together with the television manufacturers around the world, uh, and distribution companies and uh, technology companies like ourselves. Uh, to work very heavily on what that specification would be. Um, in doing that, we uh, landed on a mastering display called uh, from Sony called the X300, which is an OLED display, which has uh, 1,000 nit peak luminance and goes all the way to a true zero black. That black's measured down to four decimal points. The mm -hmm. reason I point that out and that we grade to an OLED display is it is the highest dynamic range possible grade. So there are displays out there that do, let's say, 4,000 nits. And people talk about numbers always being important. Well, a 4,000 nit display based on an LCD technology may actually be limited to only 133,000 to 1 contrast ratio. Whereas grading on an OLED display with 1,000 to, well, 1, to 1 peak luminance actually gives us a greater than 10 million to 1 contrast ratio. Hmm. So here, in grading on that display, we actually create the highest dynamic range possible image, which displays in the home can't yet take advantage of. So yeah, by exactly. creating that, sorry, go ahead. Oh, I was just going to say, um, uh, regarding the OLED, the X300, the Sony X300 OLED mastering monitor, which is beautiful. I've seen it. It's really amazing. Um, but I would assume that you'd have to grade in a fairly dark room. And one of the things that high people talk about in terms of high dynamic range, at least co consumers, is well, but I don't watch in a dark room. I watch in a you know room with some ambient light because you know grandma's knitting over in the corner, or the kids are playing or something, and and I got to have light on in the room. So, do you take that into account at all? 
Am I correct that you that you grade on this monitor in a in a really dark environment? It seems to me you'd have to. You're absolutely correct. And actually, the same thing is true when we did standard dynamic range. We grade in a dark environment. Um, so one of the reasons that consumer electronics TVs pushed the brightness higher and higher wasn't to to make that ultra dynamic mode. Really, was to be able to take advantage of the content within a brighter environment. So if we grade to 100 nit. Rec 709 in a dimly lit room and you go to a brighter room and that television is maybe a 300 nit, 400 nit TV with the same contrast ratio for SDR uh, as our grading reference monitor, pushing up the luminance still gives you the content the way that it was meant to be seen. So we're still preserving the creative intent in a correct mode. If you move to dynamic mode, we know that that pushes it out saturation wise, contrast wise to the extremes. But if you're in a properly calibrated movie mode and maybe increase the backlight, you can actually maintain what was seen in that dark environment. The similar result is possible in high dynamic range. By grading to something that gives us that contrast ratio as television manufacturers make brighter and brighter screens, the reason they're pushing it brighter and brighter is to allow for that kind of a room ambient light adaptation to take place, which is very key for the consumer environment. But We can't grade for every room. We can't grade for every screen. We grade to the best of our ability. And as Mm -hmm. such, we have to grade on a monitor in a properly lit environment and recommend that if somebody wants to see it exactly as it was intended to be seen, uh, they should review it in the same style environment. Kind of a darker environment. Certainly video files like myself and many members of ABS Forum would agree. And, And they watch their TV, their movies, and so on in a darkened environment. Uh, but I have come to realize recently that we're probably in the minority. <laughs> um, yeah, probably, unfortunately. 